it's that old flight sim dilemma. You have an excellent PC, you've got all your favourite add-ons installed, you're on final, and then your FPS plummets. Want some free tips and tools to help fix this? Then watch on. Hello and welcome to another Oblivion Plays video! In this video, we are going to look at how to boost your FPS and exploit. This isn't a magic cure and it certainly isn't going to be anywhere near the boost that you're going to get from Vulcan, if the hype is true. However, it's the best method I've found for getting the most out of your system. We'll start by looking at my X-Plane settings and how to avoid some pitfalls, and then we'll look at an excellent free utility called Fly Aggie Tweak Utility, the link for which is in the description below. So first we'll look at my settings that I use for 4K X-Plane use. Obviously, if you're using 1080p, you can adjust these settings accordingly. You might be able to boost up a few of them uh, and still maintain a decent FPS. Now, the settings that have the greatest impact on your FPS are the visual effects, world objects, reflection detail, anti-aliasing, and drawing shadows on your scenery. However, the real killers are reflection detail and drawing shadows. For some reason, despite being out now for over three years, Laminar still haven't optimised these settings. There are some other pitfalls that the tweak tool will address, but we'll come to that shortly. So we'll go through my settings. So for visual effects, I have my setting at high brackets HDR. Now you can jump this up to uh, the maximum, but I don't find much of a visual um, benefit, but there is a significant FPS drop if you go up to that highest level. Uh, and that's similar for number of world objects. The difference between high and maximum isn't significant, so I leave it at high. Uh, texture quality. Now, this doesn't have a huge impact on your FPS, although it probably will have a, mi a minimal one. Um, but what this basically has the greatest impact on is your VRAM, which is what you see at the bottom. Um, now, if you're flying in areas where you're using a lot of uh, third-party uh, add-ons which use high-quality textures, you'll notice that your VRAM gets filled up very quickly. The risk with that is if it exceeds your graphics card's VRAM, you're at an increased chance of X-Plane crashing or at least stopping loading in any further textures, which is the equivalent of crashing because by the time you get to your airport, there's no buildings there or any detailed textures. So personally, I leave it at high because I tend to fly around the UK where I've got Orbex True Earth installed and that uses up a huge amount of texture quality. And that setting is what is advised by Orbex themselves. As you can see in one of my streams, I've fallen ill to uh, boosting that texture quality too high. And uh, as a result, Manchester Airport didn't load in at the end. Next is reflection detail. Now, if you go any higher than low, you'll get a huge impact on your FPS. So the recommended setting is low for reflection detail. Uh, you still get some minimal reflections. Um, unfortunately, I find I can't go any higher than that without taking a huge impact. And the same really goes for anti-aliasing. It's up to you how high you can go. Um, for 1080p, you might want to be going up to four um, or even eight times, um, but each step you go up, you're going to um, compromise your FPS. For 4K, because the resolution is so high, you don't really need a high level of anti-aliasing, so the two time setting is perfect for me. So welcome to x -Planer. and we're here at the beautiful Orbex Innsbruck. Now for benchmark purposes, so like I said, I'm using Orbex Innsbruck. Normally I use X-Envira, but I've turned that off simply because you're not going to see the dynamic effects that changing the settings on tweak utility options has with X-Envira on. Because basically the impact that X-Envira has on your FPS is so significant that it actually minimizes the benefit of having the tweak utility. So basically for you guys to see how much of a difference this utility makes, I've turned it off for now. But what I'll do is I'll show you some examples later on of using using this utility with, uh, with X-Envira and we'll see what kind of the frame rate that we're getting. So the menu that you see in front of you is the tweak utility options and I don't even use 25% of the settings that are available in this uh, option. It's really in depth and it gives you, in addition to graphics options, some also some sim options such as you can change your fuel tanks, like your auto gyro, your auto barrow, you can look at weight and balance, uh, it simulates some sounds which personally I don't like but you might like, um, particularly if you don't have XP realistic um, and also it, it can simulate bird strikes for you as well. The other nice thing that this utility gives you, because it's a Fly Lua um, plugin, it actually also gives you a click box option for XP Realistic, um, which is quite nice because it saves you having to go through the plugins menu at the top. Um, and to access the tweak utility menus, you also click the, the, the click box at the bottom right. Now the five settings that we're going to focus in on today are the level of detail, your FPS target, the water effects and reflections, the level of detail of road traffic, 
and also atmosphere and visibility. Now the first thing that we'll focus in on is your FPS target and your level of detail. Now as you see we're getting around about 25 frames with the settings in the default setting um, which is the X-Plane defaults. If we go to uh, an FPS target of 60 which is pushing it within a 4K system but we'll just see what it can do and switch over to auto level of detail we'll just see how that FPS starts to creep up. So we're already up to around about 30 just by t using that setting alone. Now the auto level of detail intensity, um, I'm not entirely clear what this does, but from my impression is it basically just adjusts how quickly it changes that level of detail. I just leave it on the default setting of 30 because that works quite well for me. Now the other two FPS killers that I was alluding to when I was going through my settings are water effects and reflections and also road traffic. Now what I'll show you is just simply by turning off the water reflections, we've again added an additional kind of three or four frames once that settles out. Um, reflections wise I leave it on one obviously the higher you go the more of an impact has as you can see we've just lost 10 frames per second so I leave it at one because that seems to be the best compromise it gives you like a reasonable water effect at uh, minimal FPS cost and the same goes for road traffic now the maker of the the uh, Flyagger utility actually suggests just keeping your road traffic off um, but as you can see it doesn't make a huge impact for me um, I'm only kind of losing one frame if that so I have it on one and then I and I have just on one plus rather than two plus and then um, that works out pretty well for me um so we're, yeah we're getting about 35 frames it doesn't seem to have a huge impact on my system but it, for a lot of systems it does have a big impact now the other thing you can do is change atmosphere and visibility but the basically the max dsf is the setting you want to adjust um if you reduce that it basically reduces your visibility um and you you might have noticed on your sim at the far end of your visibility you kind of get like a fog almost like a fog of war uh, and if you decrease that that um basically it increases your frames per second as you see we're going up to like 40 now um but at the cost of some realism because you basically if you go too low as you can see here um you can start to see the kind of ring about around you as promised, here is the sim running maxed out with X Enviro, Orbex Scenery, with the Zebo 737 on approach into Innsbruck. What I'll do is show you the difference in frames between default X-Plane 11 settings and when using the Tweak Utility. As you're going to see, there isn't a huge amount of difference between the two examples. As I said before, this is because X Enviro 1.11 with the volumetric clouds takes a huge FPS hit, which the Tweak Utility simply can't fight against. So here, first of all, we're seeing X-Plane 11 running with the default settings and as you can see in the top left hand corner we're running about 18 to 20 frames per second. This is X-Plane 11 running with the Tweak Utility. As you can see we're getting marginally better frames about 23 to 26 frames per second. So overall that's an improvement of between 5 and 6 frames per second. However I would note in addition to the frame rate improvement I've noticed that the sim is a lot smoother with the utility on. Also, this is an extreme example and what I've found to be the bare minimum benefit you'll see out of the Tweak Utility. If you're using fewer add-ons, you'll see greater improvement as you saw earlier in this video. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have, please hit that like button below. If you'd like to watch more of my videos and live streams, then do subscribe. If you want to be notified when I'm streaming, then please hit the bell icon or follow me on Facebook, where I'll post news and updates about my channel. The link is in the description below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.